Welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today we're going to take a look at getting WSJTX installed and running on the Raspberry Pi. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Before we get to today's tutorial, I got to give a shout out to Doug and Jeff. Those guys are my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon in the description below. Okay, so first thing we need to do today is go ahead and get our terminal window open. And let's move over to the downloads directory with cd space downloads. Now let's head over to the WSJTX website. And this is the one, I'll leave a link to this down in the description below, but this is the one uh, for the Princeton.edu website, not their SourceForge. I prefer this one just because of the way SourceForge handles load balancing on the back end. It can make the link sometimes a little bit squirrely on there. So let's scroll down the page and under this section here, the installation packages. Of course, we're looking for Linux. And this last one here, is for the Raspberry Pi. Now this says stretch. I'm actually going to be installing this on Buster today. I don't think we'll have too many issues with that though. So let's right click on this file and say copy the link location. Now let's head back over to the Pi and we're going to start with our wget command. Now one thing that's a little bit different, for whatever reason, Princeton's uh, certificate, their, I guess it's their HTTPS certificate, uh, returns invalid a lot of times. So we're just going to bypass that by saying hyphen hyphen no hyphen check hyphen certificate. And then let's paste in that link that we just found, and that should alleviate any uh, certificate errors that we might encounter. Go ahead and hit return and give that just a couple of minutes to download. Once that finishes up, I'm just going to clear the screen out there. And let's list out that directory. Whoop. Okay, you'll see the new file right here that we just downloaded. Let's install that with sudo dpkg space hyphen i and then let's just type the first few letters of that package name and hit the tab key to autocomplete and go ahead and hit return. Now I expect this to give me uh, some dependency errors and it looks like I was right. So you can see dependency problems right here and then it depends on several other packages to be installed. Now we could try to uh, install those one at a time but I've got a much simpler way. Let's clear that screen out and let's run sudo app-git space hyphen hyphen fix hyphen broken space install. Go ahead and hit the return key and after a couple of seconds it'll ask you do you want to continue? We'll say yes here and press enter and that should take care of installing all of the dependencies that we need for this application to work correctly. So we'll give that just a couple of more seconds to finish up. All right once that finishes again I'm just going to clear the screen out. I'm going to go back and run this command again, this is a sudo dpackage dash i or dpkg uh, hyphen i and then the package name just like we did before when we got the errors. This should only take a couple of seconds to get this one installed this time. Once that's finished up, I'm just going to go ahead and exit out of the terminal window. And let's come up to our main Raspberry Pi menu. And it's probably under your sound and video settings. We'll come down to WSJTX and give that just a couple of seconds to boot up. All right, now when it first boots up, you're probably going to see a uh, sound card error. You'll have to click OK two or three times here to get that to clear out. Now let's come up to File and Settings. First thing you want to do is enter your call sign and then your grid square. 
Now, the one thing I did forget to do here is I rely on FL Rig. Get some of this moved out of the way. I rely on FL Rig for rig control. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start FL Rig. And we'll just move it over out of the way. So uh, let me explain that just a little bit. What I do is I've got FL Rig set up to handle my 857 for rig control. So I'm going to tell WSJTX to send the rig control commands to FL Rig, which will then pass them on to the radio. Uh, it, it's just a personal preference. You may choose to do it another way. So I've got my call sign and my grid. Let's head over to radio right here where it says rig. We're going to open that up and I'm going to scroll down until I find FL rig. I'll go ahead and choose that. Now I'm going to move over to the audio tab. And under input, I'm going to come down here to plug HW card equals codec dev equals zero. Now I am running a signal link sound card, so you may have to play around with this a little bit if you're running something different. Uh, and guys, I am running this on Buster, which is the latest Raspbian operating system. Under output, I'm going to choose the same thing. And then let's go ahead and click the OK button. And that should take care of the very basics for setup. Now it shows 20 meter here. So I'm just going to check FL rig. And you'll see, in fact, it is sitting on 14.078. So let's go ahead and move that over to 40 meters and make sure that rig control is working correctly. We'll take a look at this and you can see I have moved over to 40 meters. So I'm going to go ahead and move to the whisper mode here. And the last thing I want to do is I just want to check and make sure that PTT control is correct for my setup. So I'm going to lower my power just slightly here and click the tune button inside of this. And in fact, I do hear my rig key up. So I know that everything is working correctly. All right, guys, I hope this helps you get FT8 set up and running on your system. Be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. And click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Go ahead and hit the bell right after you do that, and you'll be notified of future videos like this. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3. All right, and for those of you who stick around to the bitter end, here's a little bonus footage for you. Didn't really warrant its own video, but I did find this case over on Amazon recently, and I've really been pleased with it. So I was just going to give you guys a quick look. Uh, it's just a cable management system, basically. Let me see if I can find the... Oh boy, those are really noisy on that table. Um, let's get this unzipped, and I'll lay that out there for you. And you can see that it's just a way to kind of organize the cables that I need when I go out portable with lots of little slots in this and uh, mesh pockets to hold a few larger items, things like that. I did have all of this just in one uh, zippered bag and it was kind of becoming chaotic. I was having to dig through it too much to try to find uh, exactly what I was looking for. But I'll leave a link to this case down in the description below if you guys are interested. So there's one part of it. And this is the other half of the case. So it has two different zippered compartments here. Uh, so you saw one side a while ago, this side uh, I believe they even say an iPad mini. I haven't tried mine, but I believe an iPad mini is supposed to slide in or be able to slide into this pocket over here. I just have the uh, cable for my solar panel and uh, some antenna wire there. So anyway, just a little bonus tip for you guys. If you're, if you're interested in uh, a case like this, like I said, I'll leave it down in the description below. I greatly appreciate you guys who watch these to the very end. We will see you guys later on, 7-3.